Greetings fellow Earthlings and welcome to this tiny garage! Last week we finished rebuilding the engine part of this Porsche's engine. I know, I can't believe it. And so now we get to put all the other bits and bobs onto the engine that help make that magic happen. This week I was going to start with all the various sensors on the engine that talk to the engine computer, but hold back your excitement for a second. First, we have a couple of loose ends to take care of. We have a couple of things left over from last week. The first one is cylinder head sealing. These 12 bolts need to have some sealant behind them or they'll leak. Thank you Lee Jenkins at Hartech UK for telling me that. So I'm just doing them one at a time because they are all supposed to be torqued. The torque on that is 13 newton meters once you've got the sealant behind them. And then I'm just gonna do all of those 12 bolts on both banks and it's done. Next thing then is the cylinder head bolts. The main big ones I replaced, but I also replaced all these little ones too. They seem important, so why not? The oil return pumps can go on now. So for bank one here, just in front of the primary chain sprocket. We're oiling them a bit because it is a very tight fit. For bank one, you want the 1-3 to be pointing down on the outside edge. I'm using the boroscope there just to check that the drive tab on the pump itself is going to go into the slot on the primary chain sprocket. Also making sure that that arrow or pyramid points towards the inside of the engine then some blue thread locker on most of the bolts that are going back in here and then just 10 newton meters on those 10 mils. The oil return pump on bank two really is very much identical. Instead you need to make sure that the four and six is pointing up on the inside and that the triangle shape is pointing away from the center of the engine. Other than that they are like the same pump. And then on that one as well, 10 millimeters, 10 newton meters, you're done. Hold on, what's the dog doing? Oh yeah, subscribe now. Delta says thank you. It's time now to put the other part of our direct oil feed together. You can see the oil pressure gauge on bank two there. Well on bank one, there is the same sort of port, but it's blocked off. We're going to open up that port and use it to feed this little adapter that came with the kit from Tuna RS Motorsports. That's a 19 mil to attach that guy right there. The thread locker, the red thread locker came with the kit as well. And this is the actual pipe that feeds the oil to the IMS bearing. That's an 11 mil on there. To make this easier to attach the other end, I'm going to rotate the engine over. On the other end, this is what originally came in the kit, but they updated it and they sent me the update. Now it has a copper crush ring. More of that red thread locker. The red thread locker has a much stronger hold than the blue thread locker and is for use on bolts that are important or inaccessible and that you don't plan on removing anytime soon. That's very much the same thing, an 11 mil on there with 13 newton meters to attach it. Next up, crankshaft sensor clip replacement. I didn't even know this was here and that it was broken. I noticed it now looking around. That has to come out. This actually does hold the crankshaft sensor wire, but it's also what holds this IMS DOF pipe in place. Here we go, looks nice. Ready to go. You can see easily there now that that's the feed from the bank one that goes down over to the bell housing and into the IMS. I would like if you would hit the like button. The camshaft position sensor for bank one. Let's start off with a bird's eye view just to get a lay of the land for what's coming up. Here's what this looked like before cleaning. Okay, much better now. Okay, so here is the camshaft position sensor for bank one, then bank two is over there. And then for the knock sensors, there's bank one right there. And then bank two is just on the other side kind of thing. And then for the crankshaft position sensor, that is just one of them right there. 
And so let's get on with it. We're gonna start off with the camshaft position sensor. That's what it looks like. Electronic cleaner on all of these electronic bits. And then also a new O-ring. Now we had to buy a special at Porsche. It didn't come in the gasket kit. We did get some new thread locker from Permatex. It's a gel now and it is blueberry smell, which is a little odd. Kind of smells like a moldy boat. And then this is an H5 with 10 Newton meters. Pretty simple. Crankshaft position sensor. We'll do this next because it's right next door to that camshaft position sensor we just did. It goes into that little clip. It also is an H5, but this goes to eight Newton meters. Very little Newton meters indeed. That one doesn't have an O-ring because it's in a dry part of the engine. All right, camshaft position sensor for bank two. It's very, very similar. There it is. You bolt it on, you're done. Okay, knock sensors for bank one and bank two. These are piezoelectric microphones that hear for pre-ignition or knocking. This is a 20 Newton meter torquing of a 13 millimeter bolt. And the bank two knock sensor is spookily similar. The oil pressure sensor is next. Take a look there on bank one. We just took that oil feed for our direct oil feed IMS. On the other side on bank two is another orifice for the same sort of thing. What goes in there is this oil pressure sensor. And then I did get new O-rings for that. The new one is quite a different design. It's uh, smaller in every respect, so be it. And then this one we're using in 19 mil to torque it to 25 Newton meters, but we can't fit a socket over it, obviously. So I found this adapter thing in the bottom of my tool kit. Now, does that work? Is that gonna give you an accurate torque reading? And if not, how are you supposed to torque those things? Anyway, let me know in the comments if anyone knows. Hopefully that is good. The secondary air injection system. On startup, the air pipe blows pressurized smog pump air into the exhaust manifold before the catalytic converters. That additional oxygen allows for a more complete combustion and lower emissions in a cold engine, which is good for squirrels and trees. These metal gaskets came in the gasket kit from episode 24. And this seems pretty simple. We put those 10 mils in there I don't actually know what the torque setting is supposed to be for these particular bolts. I'm going with 13 Newton meters because that's very common for this style of bolt. And everything was going well till I came to that bolt and it seemed like maybe I was gonna snap the head off. It had that Play-Doh feeling. And so I swapped it out. I grabbed a new one and I stuck that in there. but it felt the same way. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? So I pulled it out again and I decided just to take out that whole unit and take a look at what is going on. All right, removing the gasket. Have a look there at that particular bolt hole. You notice the one on the right-hand side has threads and then the one on the left-hand side does not. Oh no. That's obviously not good. Um, I did look into it a little bit on the Google and there is a thing called a helicoil kit that you can use to put threads where there are none. And so I'm gonna be looking into that. If any of you know anything about helicoil kits and which one I should use for that, please let me know in the comments. And perhaps the newest member of the garage, George Pratt knows the answer. Hello, George. Thank you very much for joining the garage and helping support getting this beautiful car back on the road. Well, unfortunately, uh, I have to figure out how to fix that thread. And uh, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time.